Today we are going to learn the Unmatched game system. Unmatched is a game where characters from across reality, entertainment, literature, mythology, and legend come together to fight. This four-pack here, Le Battle of Legends Volume 1, was the first release for the game, and in battle there are no equals. You can do team play, or just an all-out battle royale, but you can have various characters, for example in this box is Sinbad, Alice, King Arthur, and Medusa. And there's going to be a map in each box that comes with more than one character because the selections available right now are single box, which only have a fighter in their deck. There's double boxes, which have two fighters, a map, and decks of cards. There's triple boxes, which have three fighters, maps, and decks of cards. And then there is a cooperative mode that comes with fighters and the game-controlled, I guess you could call it AI, version of the game where the game will go against you and it has its own decks of cards that you draw from, but the fighters from these boxes can also be mixed to the original game, which is just battling, as well as the fighters from this game can be brought into the co-op mode. There's a very small list of ones that don't really translate. Black Panther is one of them that's often quoted for that. But anyway, let's open up the box, take a look, and learn the game. The description of Unmatched Game System as the rulebook presents it is Unmatched is a miniatures dueling game featuring fighters of all kinds. From the page to the screen to the stuff of legends, each hero has a unique deck of cards that fits their fighting style. You can mix and match fighters from any Unmatched set, but remember, in the end, there can be only one winner. Heroes and Sidekicks. All of your characters in the battle are called your fighters, but your primary fighter is called your hero. Heroes are represented by miniatures that move around the battlefield. Your other fighters are called sidekicks. Most heroes have a single sidekick. Some heroes have multiple sidekicks. And still, other heroes have no sidekicks at all. Sidekicks are represented by tokens that move around the battlefield. Each hero has a special ability noted on their character card. This card also lists your fighter's stats, including the starting health of your hero and their sidekick. Fighter's health is tracked on a separate health dial. Fighters cannot gain health higher than the highest number on their health dial. If your hero has multiple sidekicks, each sidekick has only one health, unless otherwise specified. The character card instead lists the total number of sidekicks. So, how to play. Players take turns maneuvering their fighters on the battlefield, playing schemes, attacking their opponent's fighters. To win, you must be the first to defeat your opponent's hero, which happens when they're reduced to zero health. And for this video here, I'm going to start with a setup for just two players. So we will look at the team playing or four players or three or more later. So set up step one. Choose a battlefield and place it on the table. For today I'm going to be using the map, I believe it's pronounced Sarpedon. So this is going to be the battlefield for today. Step two of setup is each player chooses a hero, takes their corresponding 30 action cards, their character cards, the hero miniatures, the sidekicks, the health dials, and any other components that may go with that hero. The next step, step three, each player takes their hero's starting health and their sidekick's starting health and turns them onto the matching health dials to their starting position, which King Arthur is 18, Merlin is 7, and that information is found on the character card. Their starting health is right here. Sidekicks that have no starting health just have a health of 1. Each player will then shuffle their action cards and form a face-down deck, and they will draw five to start with. Now, how you place characters can be varied, but on step five of the rulebook, the younger player places their hero in the number one spot on the battlefield. Then they place their sidekicks in separate spaces within the same zone as their hero. If their hero is in a space that is part of multiple zones, their sidekicks may be in any of those zones. If you have to make a decision about your fighter at the beginning of the game, such as Alice's size, make it now. So, this is a zone. If he was to be standing in this zone, you could put your sidekick in either the yellow or the pink. So, you're starting in blue. Your sidekick, if you were King Arthur, can go in any of these blue spots. Then, the older player in this two-player game will take their miniature and place it on the number two spot on the board. So, there's the number two. Going back, there's the number one. And they will follow the same rules of placing their sidekicks as 
player one did when they placed their figure. Then it would be the younger player takes the first turn. Again, you can change how you pick characters and place them and stuff according to how you want to do it in your home, but this is the rules way to do it, in Battle of Legends Volume 1 at least. So this is not a zone, actually. This is a space. The battlefield is made up of circular spaces that the fighters will move between. Each space can only contain one fighter at a time. Two spaces connected by a line are adjacent. Adjacency is used to determine targets of attacks and various card effects. The spaces of the battlefield are divided into zones, which are indicated by different colors and different patterns. All spaces with the same color and pattern are part of the same zone, even if they are in different parts of the battlefield. If a space has multiple colored patterns, it is considered to be part of multiple zones. Zones are used to determine targets of ranged attacks and various card effects. For example, here, this space has triple zones. So, if you are in this one, you can do anything that would affect zones in those three colors. Now, your turn as a player. On your turn, you must take two actions. You cannot skip an action. You may choose two different actions or the same action twice. The possible actions are maneuver, scheme, and attack. You have a hand limit of seven cards. At the end of your turn, if you have more than seven cards in your hand, you must discard down to seven cards, placing any discarded cards in your discard pile. Then it's your opponent's turn. Let's go over the anatomy of a card. First, this is the overall type of the card up here in the top left corner. The types are attack, which is the red with the little burst, Defense, which is the blue with the shield, Scheme, which is yellow with the lightning bolt, and Versatile, which is both an explosion and a shield. They can be attack or defense. Then we have attack or defense value, which is underneath the symbol, 2, 0, nothing, and 2 in these examples. Then we have the fighter that's allowed to use the card. For example, this one is King Arthur. This one would only be able to be used by Merlin. And then there is the any, which any of your fighters could use them. Then we have D, the name on the card. This one is Noble Sacrifice. E, the effect of the card. For example, during combat, you may boost this attack. This is in addition to any boost from King Arthur's special ability. The boost value is going to be right here in this little number. And down here is the deck that the card appears in and how many copies are in that deck. Each hero's deck is different, though they may share some cards with other heroes' decks. So, now we will go over the actions in depth. Going over action possibility number one, maneuver. When you take a maneuver action, you first draw the top card of your deck, then you may move your fighters. Step one of that is mandatory, which is drawing a card. Draw the top card of your deck and add it to your hand. You can have more than seven cards in your hand during your turn, but you must discard down to seven cards at the end of your turn. Drawing cards, whether via the maneuver action or due to a card effect, is mandatory unless otherwise specified. When your deck is empty, your fighters are exhausted. If you need to draw a card while your fighters are exhausted, do not reshuffle your discard pile. Instead, each of your fighters will immediately take two damage. Step two of maneuver is moving your fighters. This is an optional step. Your character card lists your move value. For example, King Arthur and Merlin have a movement of two. During this step, you may move each of your fighters one at a time, a number of spaces equal to or less than your move value. You may also choose to boost your movement. When you move a fighter, each space they move must be adjacent to their previous space. You may move a fighter through spaces occupied by other friendly fighters, i.e. your own fighters, but they cannot end their movement in an occupied space. You may not move a fighter through a space occupied by opposing fighters. You may move your fighters in order of your choice, but you must finish each fighter's move before starting the next. You are not required to move all of your fighters, the same distance as the other ones, or at all. You get to choose for each fighter. You are allowed to move a fighter zero spaces. So, Merlin could step through King Arthur here and stop there, but King Arthur could not move through Sinbad there. These spaces are adjacent to each other through connected black lines. And note, if an effect ever lets you move through opponent's fighters, you must respect all of the same movement rules, but from your opponent's perspective. Boosting. When you take the maneuver action, you may boost your movement. To do this, discard one card from your hand and add that card's boost value to the movement value. Ignore any effect on the discarded card. Certain effects, like King Arthur's special ability, allow you to boost other things, such as the value of an attack. 
Cards that can no longer legally be played because the corresponding fighter or fighters have been defeated may still be used from your hand to boost. So, we are going to take the maneuver action with King Arthur, first drawing a card and adding it to our hand. When you play, you will not be playing with your hand face up. That's just so I can do this with one hand. But, we will then add this card from our hand to the discard pile, adding this boost value right here to our movement value. So now, King Arthur and Merlin could move up to four spaces this turn if they wished. Another possible action you can take on your turn is Scheme. When you take the Scheme action, you may choose a Scheme card indicated by the yellow lightning bolt icon from your hand and play it onto the table face up. You must declare which of your fighters is playing the Scheme card. They are the active fighter. Each card in your deck indicates which fighters are allowed to play it. You may not play a Scheme card if the listed fighters are defeated. Resolve the card's effect, then place the card into the discard pile. Here is King Arthur's discard pile. Maintain your own discard pile. All cards, once played and resolved, should be placed in the discard pile. Keep your discard pile face up to differentiate it from your deck. Both you and your opponent are allowed to look through your discard pile at any time. Another possible action you can take on your turn is attacking. When you take the attack action, you must declare which of your fighters is performing the attack. They are the active fighter. You may not take the attack action if you do not have an attack card in hand or if none of your fighters have valid targets to attack. Step 1. Declaring your target. Any fighter may target a fighter in an adjacent space regardless of what zone they are in. Fighters with melee attacks, as indicated by the sword in the two circles, may target a fighter in an adjacent space. Fighters with ranged attacks, which is the arrow through the bullseye, they may target adjacent fighter or they may target a fighter anywhere in the same zone as them, regardless of adjacency. So if Merlin was down here, he could shoot at Sinbad. Step two of the fighting and the attack is choose and reveal. As the attacker, you must choose an attack card from your hand and play it face down in front of you. It must be played as a card that your attacking fighter is allowed to use. Then the defender may, but is not required to, choose a defense card from their hand and place it face down in front of them. It must be a card that their defending fighter is allowed to use. Once both players have chosen their cards, reveal them at the same time. And we'll go over versatile cards real quick. Versatile cards, cards with the explosion and the shield icon, are versatile cards. They can be used as an attack card and a defense card. Versatile cards also count as both attack cards and defense cards for the purposes of other game effects. Step 3 of the action attack is resolve combat. Most cards have an effect with the labels indicating when they occur, immediately, during combat, or after combat. Unless otherwise specified, card effects are mandatory, which can result in dealing damage to your own fighters or negative effects. If two effects would ever appear to resolve at the same time, the defender's effect resolve firsts. After cards have been revealed, resolve any effects that occur immediately, then resolve any effects that occur during combat. Then determine the result of combat. The attacker deals damage to the defender equal to the value of their played attack card. If the defender played a defense card, subtract the value of their played defense card first. For each damage that the defender takes, reduce that fighter's health by 1, adjusting their health dial accordingly. So in this example, we will say Sinbad played Momentous Shift, which has a value of 3, and has a during combat effect. It is revealed that King Arthur has played the Holy Grail, and has an after combat effect. So, we take the 3 minus the 1, which would indicate that King Arthur is going to take 2 damage at the end of this combat. But, during combat, if your fighter started this turn in a different space, this card's value is 5 instead. We will say, for the sake of this, that Sinbad maneuvered first to get over there. So, that would be 5, this would be 1, and that would be 4 damage to King Arthur. So that puts him down to 14, but that combat is now done. So after combat, if King Arthur has 4 or less health but is not defeated, set his health to 8. Now in a different example, we will say that again, Momentous Shift was played. However, Arthur played this card, which has a higher value than the attacking card. So King Arthur would have won this combat as the defender. So... The during combat, if your fighter started this turn in a different space, this card's value is 5 instead. This time we will say he did not, so it would be a value of 3. The 4 would beat it. And after combat, if you won the combat, which in this case King Arthur does, choose one of the fighters in the combat and move them up to two spaces. So this does not deal damage back, it's just defending the incoming damage. However, you won the combat, so you could move Sinbad two spaces any way you want. 
And this here was an example of winning the combat. For example, that we just showed you, the after combat effect here checked who won the combat. The attacker wins combat if they deal at least one damage to the defender from the attack itself, not from card effects. The defender wins the combat if they took no damage from the attack itself, even if they take damage from the effects. Defeating a fighter. When one of your fighters is reduced to zero health for any reason, they are defeated. So example, King Arthur plays a combat card Excalibur, but Sinbad only has regroup. This would be five incoming damage, reducing his health dial to zero and defeating him. If your hero's sidekick is defeated, immediately remove that sidekick token from the battlefield. A sidekick without a health dial has only one health and is defeated when they take any damage. If your hero is defeated, you immediately lose the game. Winning the game. When your opponent's hero is defeated, which happens when they are reduced to zero health, the game ends immediately and you win. In a team game, all of the opposing fighters on the opposite team must be defeated. Now we'll go over team play real quick. Team play. You can play unmatched in teams of two. Teammates sit next to each other on the same side of the table in the battlefield, and they may communicate about their cards and tactics. But each player controls their own hero and sidekicks. Your teammates' fighters are considered friendly fighters. For team play with three players, one player can control both heroes and sidekicks for one team. Choose a battlefield with four starting spaces. Some battlefields have only two starting spaces and therefore cannot be used for team play. During setup, players place their heroes in alternating order. First player on team A places their hero in the number one space. Then, first player on team B places their hero in the number two space. Second player on team A places their hero in the number three space. And then the second player on team B will place their hero in the number four space. When placing their hero, each player also places their sidekicks within the same zone as normal. During the game, players take turns in alternating order. First player on team A takes their turn, first player on team B takes their turn, second player on team A takes their turn, second player on team B takes their turn. This order repeats for the rest of the game. When a player's hero is defeated, immediately remove that hero's miniature from the battlefield. That player still takes their turns as normal as long as they have at least one sidekick left. If all the player's fighters are defeated, they are eliminated and do not take any more turns. When both heroes on one team have been defeated, the opposing team wins. And that's how to play Unmatched. Various sets will come with various other rules, like some maps have objects on them that you can throw, different secret passages, etc. In closing, I will say this. Unmatched is an amazing game. I love it has a lot of content for it. Content is still coming out. As of this video, I'm waiting for the next pack, which is going to be William Shakespeare and Hamlet and a few other characters from his plays. But there's so much to this game, and it's still going. And there's even unofficial, official expansions for the game. So, this just has a lot of possibility, and it's got a cool theme. I love it, and there's plenty to get into.